Hello and welcome to another uh, SoFly trip video. Um, oh, we're, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, no problem. What's going on? <laughs> oh, we're getting into it. <laughs> we're getting right into it, baby. You guys are wearing the same thing. Aldo and Yelma. Yeah. I know. I tend to call How <laughs> did that happen? Honestly, this time Fish. I got... I this really time, uh, yeah. I really don't know. This really was just... We're synced now. It's quite something because you really are wearing the same sweater and hats. And More or less. got on the call like, and you guys look like the exact same. The Costa. Really freaking me out. I mean, Beige. you are wearing Costa. I'm wearing something from OVO, which I know will, will. Oh, yeah, shout out to, is. shout out to Black Steve Irwin. Yeah, um, shout out to yeah. Oh, he got Eland. you that. Shout out to Elon. No, no, no. He just loves Drake so much, and I know if he's watching this video, he's gonna love this sweater. Ovo, <laughs> little Ovo. He hates Drake. Does anybody say Ovo? Or is um, that? I don't. Is that, I'm but... sure. I'm sure if you were to read it, yeah, it Ovo. just reads like Ovo. But you know what I mean? Maybe I could start something. Start something. Uh, well, today we're talking about um, our trip to Miami. Uh, of course, that's what this video is, another trip video. Miami. And, uh, Miami. It was super fun, um, obviously. And uh, yeah, I mean, like, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we went to, uh, <laughs> went fishing, went to the boat show, went without Dr. Ross from Bonefish Sharpen Trust, went with Benny Blanco, met our friends from Costa. It was a real action packed weekend, you know? Yeah, it really was. We really packed a lot into essentially what was 72 hours. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. um, Let's just jump into it, you know, without further ado, Miami. Wait, what do I do? What do you mean, what do you do? I wasn't there. You ask us questions, baby. Okay, ask cool. away. <laughs> How, what do you want to ask? <laughs> How was your trip to Miami? Let's see. Oh, I'm so, <laughs> I'm glad, you, so glad you asked Here that. we go. <laughs> Here's how it was. <laughs> I've got my tie-dye shirt on here, and I think you know why, because obviously, as you can see, I'm standing on an impeccably beautiful beach. That is Miami Beach, the beach of Miami. Uh, we just got in here last night. What a fun evening it was. We uh, hopped in a convertible Mustang and uh, drove it into Miami from Fort Lauderdale and went to a cocktail bar and uh, just had a ball. We're gonna head to the boat show, see some uh, really big yachts that we'll never be able to afford. And then um, meet up with our friends from Costa. Meet up with our friends from Costa, Hannah and Joe. Bet you excited? <laughs> I'm amped, buddy. Let's go see some big old, big old runners. Are you gonna buy a boat? I'm thinking I might. I have to just find one right for me, but I'm probably in the 50 to 80 footer. Should we buy a skiff while we're here? A, a pulling skiff? Fly it back. Fly it back. No. Ride Boat it back. back. Boat's in. How about like... this one? Do you want this one? <laughs> Imagine us driving this back <laughs> to Lake Ontario. <laughs> Mitch is talking shop because uh, he's, um, well, he works for Sea-Doo now. But uh, these are the fishing ones. They're kind of neat. Yeah. They're kind of sick. <laughs> Mitch, man, I think we've arrived at Costa Stock. Costa Stock. A little tarpon? What do you think? Um, I'm thinking this is one heck of a Google footprint. <laughs> the pavilion was pretty rad. Like, Yilma, you would have loved it. Like, kick plastic, like, water dispensing <laughs> things, and obviously all the sunglasses, and then they were, you know, a few seminars, like fly tying and and, and some bonefish tarpon truss stuff, yeah. which was cool. Yeah, it was awesome. I thought. Oh, it was super cool. And then, um, obviously, the coolest part was when they invited us out onto their boat that night for a ride. <laughs> It was sick. <laughs> and that was Mitch's first time seeing a uh, tarpon. Look at this thing. I'm looking. Crazy. Oh, Mitch, that's your first tarpon. Why do I have the web thing? What's our? Sorry, we got a we got a tour guide here. Look, there's all the fish. Look at the fish. But you caught the fish in there? No, not today. Maybe tomorrow though. But you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, these colors are very Miami. What might we see today, Aldo? I don't know, we're gonna see Biscayne Bay. That's right, fishing Biscayne Bay. Lock and load. Nice. Sassy, sassy, 
Sassy, sassy lassie. The boat's usually clean, but I, where I'm Amen. keeping it in Miami, it's like underneath this big tree, and it's just like a never-ending <laughs> battle too. Like so, awesome, I'm like, man. all right, it's yeah, you know, it's awesome. It's a working boat. Cleaned once a month. It's a working boat. It's a working boat. Damn right. My name is Ross Busek. I'm a scientist for Bonefish Tarpon Trust, and we are in Biscayne Bay looking for some bonefish. This is a uh, Black Point Marina. It's uh, it's really known for the, the fact that a lot of novice boaters come here and like crash their boats into other boats and sink their trucks and stuff, so get a bit of Miami uh, heritage by launching here. Normally on a Saturday, like, there would just be total mayhem. There are people that set up right here to watch the boats launch, and uh, yeah, it's it's cool. We we talked to, to Ross right off the bat about kind of what the Bonefish Trust is up to right now, and, um, and he filled us in. Right now we are mapping bonefish habitat use, their spawning sites, uh, their migrations, and the idea is to, we can use that spatial information to inform habitat protections. What, what seagrass beds do they like? And which ones need to be restored? Which needs to be protected? Where are their spawning sites? Are they facing any stresses from too much boats running it over or pollution or anything like that? So it's really exciting. It's exciting work. And when you get to catch a bonefish, put a transmitter in it and follow it for a couple of years, it's, it's really fun. We'll find a few today that we've tagged and there'll be stories behind each one. Uh, we found one yesterday, it was really cool. We tagged it down in uh, Big Pine four years ago and it's moved up into Biscayne Bay for whatever reason. And um, yeah, it's really cool, you know, to track that fish for the last couple of years. He shows us how he tags fish and he uses like a orange box. It's a sonar thing, basically. He tags fish mm -hmm. and then puts that in the water and you can track them and see kind of their movements in the field um, and see, you know, when he's out there, like where fish are hanging out and that kind of thing. That's kind of cool. Like you put it in the water and it's just got this like kind of hum. Yeah, like a sub. While you're, like while a you're, fish, while you're fishing, it's just like. Bing. And it's like. Bing. Or what, and there's a. Bing, 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 bing. You're like. Oh. No, it doesn't do the bing. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what the fish oh, no, part is. Just, um, <laughs> so this is a manual tracking device and it'll tell us if any of our tagged fish are in the vicinity of the boat, which is a great way to help us relocate these fish and map out where they go, where they move. Yeah. Cool. So essentially, it's just a sonar. Yeah, the the tag sent off uh, a sonic pulse, and this uh, this machine can detect the the pulses those tags let off. That's cool, man. Science is so cool. <laughs> Science. Science. Ross like set us up the day before. He's like, "You guys really want to go? Like, it's not gonna be great conditions." And we're like, "Dude, we don't care. If you want to go, we're down." You know, because he obviously like thank you, Ross, for like pulling us around all day. Big uh, thanks. It was awesome. Obviously, we didn't care. We were just like, we just want to go see it. So if you want to hang out and see mm -hmm. if we can catch something, we're mm -hmm. down. And he's like, sure. I just don't want you guys to get your hopes up. We're like, no, no, no it's fine. We have no sun and potentially twenty knot winds, so uh, not awesome. But there's always hope. So epoxy flies nice did you tie have you tied all these yourself uh except for these uh -huh. and these are all real flies okay okay First snook. Just a nice little guy, but uh, they're cool looking. Like the yellow on them, the big black stripe. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> Ha ha ha! 
<laughs> Bye. That was a nice permit. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> it's... There's a bunch of them. Yeah, we got a little window into Ross's life and, of course, Biscayne Bay, and which is famous, you know, so. I love that the conditions water. weren't ideal, but still it was great fishing, you know. Yeah, well, it was, it was tough fishing, but it was, um, it was great to see it because it was our first time on Biscayne. Like, it's mm. kind of like just an iconic place, you know, it's mm -hmm. like. Yeah, you know. and I think it's a lot of, it's a place that people are so quick to write off. Yeah. It's like, oh, can we save it? It's in the shadow of Miami. And it's like, no, you can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And you're starting yeah. to see that rebound, all, like or at least in Ross's small sample size, he's pretty hopeful that the bonefish and permit are returning, and he sees them returning, and that's really cool. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. It's <laughs> anyway, then uh, then it was time to go with Benny the next day to the Glades, um, which was really fun because obviously the Everglades are uh, a really special place that we, I haven't experienced. I don't think you have either. And we were talking about it was our nope. first time. And um, yeah. we were really lucky to be able to go with uh, someone who's, you know, like obviously uh, he's like, he is the Everglades. Like he's fishing there yeah. forever. Super passionate about it. He's fighting right now against injustices that are happening that are affecting the Everglades in a big way um, with captains for clean water, Benny Blanco. And we got, like you said, hooked up with Benny through Costa. So again, it was awesome. Thank you, Costa. Thank you, Benny. Cause there's no finer way to experience what ended up being Florida Bay, the place where yeah. fly fishing was invented for yeah. salt water. Fly fishing, salt water, not fly fishing. <laughs> Maybe. I just recognize that. It's a beautiful day, beautiful morning. Lots of activity here with various boaters and people going out to explore a wondrous, beautiful, incredible place on this place we, uh, planet we call Earth. And um, I'm excited to see what we see because I think that, uh, bless you, I think that we're uh, really in for a doozy of a day. And by doozy, I mean good, not bad, doozy. So, uh, yeah, strap in, sit back, and enjoy the ride. This is the Everglades. It was so fly. <laughs> So this is Florida Bay. We're gonna fish in the birthplace of saltwater fly fishing. Um, so, I mean, talk about epic. It doesn't get any more epic than that. The first bonefish on fly ever was caught 15 miles to the east of here, directly into the sun. The first tarpon ever caught on fly rod was in that same direction. 60% um, of the bonefish and permit world records exist in this bay. Flip pallid, um, all the founders, fathers before him, um, Chico Fernandez, and Norman Duncan, and um, Stu Apt, and I mean, they all cut their teeth on saltwater fly fishing here. And the reason we even have an industry at this point is because of this bay. Wow. It's the diamond that of every registration. It's the reason we are fighting as vehemently as we are. And um, I'm so glad you guys get to come down and get to see it, and feel oh, yeah. it. And catch a Florida Bay fish and if if you're not blown away by the end of the day then I you know <laughs> I don't know what to tell you you're not alive <laughs> because if you love fishing this is the place the cool thing about Florida Bay is it's unlike any other bay in Florida in the sense that it runs east-west and, and it's influenced by two large bodies of water, the ocean and the Gulf of Mexico, the Atlantic and the Gulf. And so you have separating, separate forces pulling it in different directions. The tide chart will tell you one thing, it's fairly accurate as far as move, general movement of water, but the direction of the wind will affect the depth of water more than the tide. And so we had a lot of wind yesterday. We were only about three quarters of the way through the tide, but the, the flats are already exposed. 
And so we're further into the tide drop than what the tide chart will tell you. Um, so when you come out here, you can't just decide, oh, there's a shark in the sunlight right there. Um, you can't just decide, oh, this based on the tides is where I'm gonna go. You need to get out here and see it and then feel it. Like you can see the birds diving. Obviously there's a, a wad of bait that's been flushed off the fly that's stuck right here. The tarpon like to drop in this basin, but that's directly behind me. This is a perfect scenario for, to have really big tarpon just roll, just crawling around in 10 to 16 inches of water. Whoa. And and so um, there's no guarantee they're here, but this is a pretty damn good scenario. We're gonna go up there and look. Cool. So with these big fish around the boat, you want to have the ability to adjust the drag as you're on the fly. Like you get a big fish and you fought him for 20 minutes, and he's around the boat, you want to loosen that drag and, and manage the drag with your fingers so that if he runs off, then he doesn't break the line. Right, right, right. Um, uh, and, and if, God forbid, you hook the fish and it wraps around something on the boat and you need to get the line loose, you can you can release yeah, it pretty yeah. pretty quickly, yeah. That's pretty cool. That's cool. So, a quarter, we're gonna go with a quarter okay. when you when you set your drag. Okay. Um, and that's for fight, that's fight and drag. That's fight and drag. That's once you pull your line out and have your, your thing set, then you set it to a quarter right there. It'll be hard to pull out and that's what you want. Okay. Now we're in the tarpon zone. Um, the strip is long and slow, super slow. Like you want that fly to tickle his nose so that he has no choice. Um, if they start to follow it and um, you know, we're not getting a bite, then you can go to a real quick, sh tiny strip so that it's kind of dancing in place. And um, when they eat it, it's gonna be violent. I, I urge you not to set the hook until you feel weight. Cause they'll push it out of the way quite a bit. You just keep slow strip, keep slow strip. You feel weight then stick them and then hold on for dear life. <laughs> like they wear themselves out so fast cause they're fighting against the grass and the mud. Um, all you gotta do is hold on. Definitely wanna bow when they jump. Um, all, all you're doing when you're bowing is just not pulling. So you're, you're, you're giving them lines so that you're taking the pressure off of their face. Because when they jump, they're opening their mouth, opening all those compartments in their mouth, and they're trying to shake that fly out. So if you're pulling, you're helping them. So you just want to give them lines so you're not pulling. They, yeah, you just lean forward, give them, give them line, right? And then once they come back down tight, then you, then you slowly get that pressure back on and, and, and then you're good. But, but bowing on the jump is, is crucial, especially in this shallow water because that line will be under grass, under mud, and they'll jump and put a ton of pressure on that, that fly. Do not expect <laughs> to remember and do everything right. If you hook one, your life is over. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yep, <laughs> Pink tails. There you go. Go ahead and put it out at 12 o'clock. Yeah. Oh, yep. Yep. No. Way. Hit him, hit him. Okay. Oh, he oh, came out. <laughs> oh! <laughs> what? That was gnarly, man. <laughs> I was like, how hard am I supposed to. That just no, that came good, out? That was good pressure. He just didn't take off. Like, he didn't, like. Well, let's, see what you, let's see what he left you with. It feels like he took care of him. I feel, it feels like he did too. I don't think there's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, he took it. But, I'm good. <laughs> that was. <laughs> Holy smokes, he broke the clock. So that's good. It probably like got underneath him when he ran, went that way, you know, and, yeah. and, and you're pulling, there's, there's nothing you can do about it. That's just tarpon fishing. Yeah. But there's your first bite, dude. You got to feel a little bit of power. That was probably like a 50 pounder. It felt like a fridge on my line sinking into the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, that's crazy. The, the, when he started pulling on him, I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> That's gnarly. Yeah, like after that, there was more action. Some jumped out of the water. Was some under the water attacking the fly. It was 
I it's mean, not... all in all, you had three eats, which is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I think was... that's really, really, really cool. Like, and that was just in the morning. Oh, oh. oh my god! Oh. Oh. That was gnarly, man. <laughs> yeah, we went to a different spot after those tarpon, and you caught your first snook. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was huge. It was pretty sweet. It was tough. Like the water was really stained, so yeah. we were spooking more fish. We were like pulling over some a lot of fish. Yeah. And then, but we ate, got one laid up and a little back cast to him. It ate viciously. It ate. <laughs> yeah. And then it was pure chaos on board. It was awesome. I was like. We thought we were about to land the fish, and then it just took off behind the boat. And Benny's like, "Uh oh!" <laughs> and yeah. then so I had to start. I had to run around the entire boat, and then Mitch is like trying to like fix. Like he's holding the camera, and I'm like, "I'm like, get out! Like get out of my way!" And like it's just like pure <laughs> insanity. Awesome. But we landed it. It was a beautiful fish. It was beautiful. And, and, uh, and that was that was cool. Mitch and I both caught our first snook on that. So these fish are eating. This time of year, are eating a ton of shrimp. Like, okay. Every fish you, you catch, you bring in the boat, you shake them, and they'll spit shrimp out. So I throw a lot of orange this time of year. Orange with a flash, you know, it's it's popping. They don't, they can't tell if it's not shrimp. They just, they, they react to the color and the movement, and it's an in, instantaneous eat. It's, it's instinctual. It's not like they're smelling it or thinking about it. So like in Texas, you might go really slow. You might pop it. Here you want, you want it to be constantly moving. That fish is just as reaction strike. A lot of times, they'll eat it on, on the fall. Like it'll it'll pop on the surface, like a shrimp will jump, and they they eat it. Eat it or what? <laughs> Look at that fish, dude. That's sick. Thank you, sweetheart. That's why you put a bite tip on. Oh wow. Fried. That's pretty pretty damn. <laughs> That's so sick. What the fuck? That was crazy. Just a full view of that. Just... Fuck. 
our tail and then she gone. Thanks so much, man. Honestly, that was that was yeah, dude. It was unreal. Good. I uh, yeah had no like idea what to expect, and that was fucking insane. Well, so seeing those carpet, I, I kind of warned you a little bit. It didn't it didn't get really crazy tarpon stuff, yeah. but it was it was enough that you get a taste. I'm gonna tell people if you want to catch tarpon, come to the glades. Like, I didn't know. Like, I had, I didn't just didn't know about it. Every glades. Thanks, Benny, for taking us out again. The whole trip was spectacular. It was uh, it was a fun one. And we got to do it again, Yelman. You got to come. Yeah. Yeah, Yelman. You you would you you yeah you'd love you would love my Miami's like if there was a place that was like for me was like let's design a city for all those it's like oh it's hot um, it's big with great restaurants uh, yeah. fresh seafood everywhere and fishing uh, <laughs> and uh, oh yeah in an hour away it's like the world's best saltwater fishing I'm like um yeah yeah well thanks Miami it was fun and we'll be back for sure and um, yeah it was a good trip. Oh, big thanks to you know to uh, obviously Joe and Hannah at Costa hooking us up with uh, with Benny, yeah, um, and also you know just being really nice hosts for with us at yeah. the um, boat show and the dinner and boat ride and all that stuff. Awesome. Big thanks to Chums. If you want to learn more about this trip, uh, Mitch wrote an awesome blog, and hey. uh, we'll put that uh, in the info the comment grid. section in the off the grid blog uh, so thanks chums for that that's cool it's the first of the new blog series you're doing yep. um thanks rio and reddington for all of the all of the equipment that we used and the flies and stuff and uh thanks benny and and ross those you guys were amazing so kind to take us on the water and spend a day with us and i know it's both your days off so thank you pretty awesome <laughs> yeah, big time we'll uh have to have you up here and uh we'll uh We'll do the same. We'll we'll take you out when it's our day off. We'll go for smallmouth or something. Um, <laughs> They're gonna be like, "Oh, cool! <laughs> oh, wow, look at that sunfish!" We're like, "Wow!" <laughs> uh, but yeah, thank you everybody, and uh, thanks for watching. And uh, see you later. Kind of sucks, actually. What? Just yeah, this whole thing's bad. Yeah. yeah. It's like it's not cold enough. I need some snow. I don't know. Stupid palm trees blowing in the wind. Like, look at the sunset. Like. I don't know. I'm, I'm over it. Let's get the hell out of here.